This is my voice one day on testosterone. This is my voice one month on tea. This is my voice five months on testosterone. This is my voice six and a half months on tea. This is my voice eight months on tea. This is my voice one year on testosterone. Hey. So, I have officially been through the first year of my second puberty. One year of testosterone injections once a week, and this is what I look like. This is what I sound like. This is... This is who I am. So I could be... I could delve into my one year changes, but when it gets to the nine month mark, you really start to run out of things to report. Besides, there are countless videos of trans guys doing testosterone updates, and honestly, I don't, it's not really my favorite thing to talk about. I mean, middle schoolers who are going through the natural puberty, I'd imagine, don't like to talk about their changes with all their friends. When that's happening, you really don't know what's going on. Now I feel like I have a better idea of what's going on, and I feel like I'm able to keep track of the changes in my body, and of course I feel much more at ease with the changes in my body. I often look back on my first puberty and spend a lot of time trying to understand what was going on with me mentally. I know that a lot of it wasn't pleasant, but in addition to my depression and lack of coping skills, I took on a lot of different identities. I went through a lot of phases that, to me, when I look back on them, it really trips me out because it really does seem like they're different people. Everybody goes through an awkward phase in middle school and early high school. Most people don't spend a lot of time looking back on that time, but when they do, they usually just laugh and cringe and don't really think too much about it. But when you're a young trans kid who doesn't know that they're trans, that adds a whole other level of analysis. I deleted a lot of my old videos because they're embarrassing, but I want to try to show you the stages of my life. I'm not really going to talk about my first year on T. I'm kind of going to talk about what happened before testosterone and who I was. I don't remember much of sixth grade, to be completely honest with you. I typically have a good nostalgic memory, but with sixth grade, I just don't remember very much. In sixth grade, I was a fairly mentally unstable kid, and it wasn't really that hard to tell. I was told by someone about a year after sixth grade that when they first met me, they thought that I was mentally challenged. That made me a little self-conscious. I didn't have that many friends in sixth grade. I did start to develop a sort of an interest in older men. I had a crush on my English teacher, and he was an older guy, so I got made fun of for liking him. But <laughs> in a way, I kind of had it coming because I used to brag about it with people. I was kind of a huge attention whore in sixth grade, so being a very, very socially awkward attention whore, that's just a recipe for disaster. I was in Girl Scouts from first grade to eighth grade. I felt very awkward in Girl Scouts because I felt like I was the only boy there subconsciously and I was very self-conscious of how I acted in comparison to all the other girls. In seventh grade I had a best friend named Michelle and we're still friends now. I feel like having her as my best friend was very important for my uh, development and just my social skills in general. I never put any effort into how I dressed. I pretty much just wore a t-shirt and jeans every day, sometimes with a jacket. I didn't care about style. I didn't care about my hair or really anything. My first problems with self-esteem rose when I was nine, and they mostly circled around the fact that one, I was ugly, and two, I was stupid. I mean, there were times where I would just be sitting around just thinking like, man, I'm so ugly. Eighth grade, we have a lot to talk about with eighth grade. Eighth grade was probably the worst year for my mental health. I was extremely depressed. I thought about suicide and death a lot. I got made fun of in school, but in a more insidious way that 
older kids tend to make fun of people where it's just that thing where popular kids would come up to you and like ask you to do something just so that they can have a laugh. Like I put up this video of me rapping an Eminem song on my YouTube channel and to me it got, it went viral. It got like 400 views or something. At the time that for me was quite a lot of people. A bunch of people from my school saw the video and would come up to me and say, oh, you like, you're so good at rapping, like, why don't you kick up a freestyle right now, huh? Like, why don't you rap this Eminem song for us? They would all be kind of smirking and, like, eagerly waiting for me to do something embarrassing. And at the time, I, I loved that. I loved that these people were noticing me and paying attention to my interests. Eighth grade was when I really started to express my sort of a hyper-masculine personality, which to a lot of people was really, really strange. I cut my hair in eighth grade. I had a uh, kind of a bowl cut, kind of like Justin Bieber 2009 hairstyle, 2010. I was very masculine in eighth grade, but not masculine in like a suave sense at all. I was very angsty and that's when I started to feel really uncomfortable. Like I really started to feel like something was very obviously different about me. There was one time where I was selling Girl Scout cookies and I had pretty feminine looking glasses. If you looked closely at me and you looked at my glasses you would normally be like, oh yeah, that's a girl. But I would often be read as a guy. That happened pretty frequently and I didn't know how to feel about it at first, but one day, I was selling Girl Scout cookies, and I was wearing baggy sweatpants and a loose-fitting shirt, and I thought, hey, I'm going to go door-to-door -door with my glasses off, wearing this, and I'm going to tell everyone that I am the brother of the Girl Scout that's selling Girl Scout cookies. I mean, I couldn't think of any other way to basically force people to read me as male. So I would go door to door and I would say, Hi, my sister is selling Girl Scout cookies. Uh, I'm her brother and I was just wondering if you wanted to buy any. And I remember one guy was like, Ah, oh, well, you get Big Brother of the Year award now, don't you? And it kind of, it made my heart flutter a little bit. It felt good. And, um... So I did that and that was 8th grade. I guess you could say I was kind of a late bloomer with my first puberty. I didn't really start developing, like I didn't get my first menstrual cycle till I was 14. But you know, I, I was interested in boys. I figured I need to get hot when I go into high school. So I grew my hair out and I bought some makeup, started wearing it every day. I was fairly popular with the boys. I was not popular in school, but within the unpopular crowd, I was popular with the boys. A lot of guys had crushes on me. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't even that cute. I don't... <laughs> but, you know, I got my, my skin cleared up, I dyed my hair, I... I put... I, I did... I cared about how I looked. And I completely left behind 8th grade me. I completely forgot about all of my interests. Whatever persona I was in 8th grade, that that kid was dead. But I would still put on androgynous clothes when I got home. But it was just something I did in my room in front of a mirror. And I was, I still had not, you know, sorted out my mental problems. So I was still pretty mentally unstable and sort of narcissistic and histrionic at times. I was very overdramatic. I was very, I was still someone who was like, I really liked attention. In sophomore year, I uh, had a boyfriend, he was straight, so I had to keep up a fairly feminine presentation, but at this time, I cut my hair short again, and I felt like that made me want to dress more masculine. He sort of made it clear to me that he thought it was weird that I was androgynous, and it was at this time where I found out what gender identity was, and I was identifying as a, a genderqueer and I made a coming out video about how I was genderqueer. I'm... I'm genderqueer. If you don't know what genderqueer is, that's not surprising because not a lot of people know what it is. It is not 
transgender and it doesn't mean I'm a lesbian because actually I have a boyfriend and I only like boys. So basically what genderqueer is, is when you're kind of in the middle of being like totally feminine or totally masculine and uh, right now I am right as of you know today I'm more on the masculine I said the masculine side was, it was like right here, I don't know. But I'm more on a masculine side today. So I told my boyfriend that, and he was like, that's kind of weird. Like, I kind of see you as a guy now. And I was like, okay, forget it. I'm not genderqueer, I'm a girl. I was, I, I, I never felt comfortable with the label genderqueer. I kind of just had that on so that I wouldn't have to justify myself for wearing men's clothes. I would just say like, oh, I'm wearing this because I'm genderqueer. And this picture is actually the first time I went out in public in menswear and I felt like everyone was staring at me, but it was for a Halloween costume. Junior year is when I really started to butch it up. I really started to experiment with my taste in menswear, but I really started to feel like th this wasn't right and I figured, well, I'm, I can't go back to being a girl. I just don't think I can do that. I did for a short period of time during my junior year where I was just like, it's fine, I'm just an androgynous girl. Like, I'm just gonna be an androgynous girl, dress how I want, and leave it alone. But, obviously, when you're born in the wrong body, you can't really keep that up for very long. And so, I came out at the end of my junior year. And then senior year, I came out to all my teachers. And then I started taking testosterone on August 18th, 2016. and. That was a pretty big moment for me. I was just 18. I didn't think I would be on hormones at 18. I mean, it came out when I was 17, and I remember thinking, oh, I'm probably not gonna be able to start my physical transition until I'm at least 21. I'm really glad that I went on testosterone. I don't have any regrets. I don't have any doubts. I'm pretty happy with how I look and the fact that I pass all the time now. I wish I could show my eighth grade self who I am now because it's, it's like insane how much I've changed. This is getting really cheesy and cliche, so I'm just gonna stop it here. To everyone who's been a part of my channel since the beginning, there's probably none of you out there, but for those of you who have been following my transition, thanks so much for sticking around, and um, I don't feel like I'll make many more transition-related videos after this. I just don't want this to be seen as the the big part of who I am. Like, yes, I'm trans, but that's not what this channel is about. I hope you all like what I'm doing, and I hope that um, you all have a wonderful day. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.